Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your person who just makes Let's Plays about video games, and that is just what Self-Critical Automaton does. So, uh, yeah, before we get started today, I have an apology to make. I wholeheartedly and unreservedly apologise for kicking some birds in the first episode of this series. I just... You know, I didn't examine the hierarchical structures that led to me kicking those birds. I just... I was told to kick birds and I kicked birds. I didn't even examine what harm I could be doing. So, that out of the way, let's get started. I hope the reason nobody ever comes back from the desert is because they find something better than the other end. Won't you go and look for something to eat? I can't go on right now. I'll be right back. So, Deandra gets kind of a raw deal in this game. She's almost the damsel archetype, except for the fact that you don't rescue her from every from anything. She just kind of follows you around. Um, the developers have actually talked about this, which is one of the reasons why Remart is the, like, second character in the sequel to this game. Uh, because a lot of fans said, hey, Deirdre's kind of boring and Remart seemed really cool. In fact, I think one of the developer's sisters actually said, um, actually said almost exactly that, which is why Remart is the second main character in the second game. But unfortunately, Deirdre exists primarily to be someone for Gut to do exposition to. Um, although I do, I do feel like she has a sort of a wry character of her own that's endearing, but, um... Yeah, she gets a raw deal. One of the things I really like about the design of these spaces is kind of... Hmm. It's going to take some effort to talk about it properly, so I'm just going to take a look at this first. Oh, it's Oxameter. Kek. Alas, poor Examiter. See, even a relatively harmless seeming obsession can ultimately be detrimental to you. The poor guy finally found something as stubborn as he was. Although, I guess he had guns for some reason. Um, but yeah, so the environmental designs in this game fascinate me uh, for a lot of reasons. One is the absolute disinterest in explaining anything, which I think is an admirable motive uh, in games generally. And, um, in this kind of game, in this kind of setting especially, there is a, an obsession, generally speaking, in the kind of nerd communities that get into games and that kind of thing, with examining every detail, finding out the real, actual truth of what happens and what goes on. And by the way, I hate these guys, they're really freaky. These look to me very much like, um, you know those glitches you get in games like Skyrim, where it tries to map the model and skin of a, a human onto, for example, the animation skeleton of a horse. And so a human sort of goes bleh and, and bends over and gets creepy long legs and a stretched out face as his, as his body tries to become the shape of a horse while also being the shape of a human. That's These guys have that energy. Um, so, yep, a little bit more wanton animal cruelty in this time, but it's rabbits rather than birds. And as far as I know, my fan base has no particular interest in rabbits. Anyway, as I was saying, there's this kind of, um, there's a kind of an aesthetic in classic fantasy art of just having interesting spaces that imply things and from which you can make inferences, but which have no genuine truth to them. Um, and it's more about how they make you feel, and it's more about that whole kind of thing rather than have any having any kind of objective truth to them or any kind of intentional story told. As you explore this world of Xenozoic, you see so many things that indicate possible things. There's a tower here, so someone must have built it. Why was it built here? Well, there's an oasis in the desert. Perhaps this was a settlement once, you know? But those aren't questions you're supposed to ask, and asking them is besides the point. The purpose is to provide a centerpiece and to provoke some kind of a feeling. Presumably an ominous feeling, because a chained tower is a very thematically powerful image, especially with a big skull on the front. 
Also, I just... This is a lovely skybox. There are a lot of good skyboxes in this game, and this one is an absolute delight. Note the, um, the bright sun where we came from, and the ominous green glow where we're heading. So, uh, yeah. I think that having these just chunks of shattered, forgotten things, odd little shards of dream intersecting into one another, it really lends a lot to the painterly feeling of the visual designs in this game. It doesn't feel like a place that is supposed to be real. It feels like like your memories of a children's storybook that freaked you out a little bit when you were a kid. Well, that might just be me. It also doesn't... The game doesn't tell you that you need to hunt rabbits here. You kind of just have to guess. I think they were relying on the uh, tendency of people playing video games to eventually just try every verb they have, so... You find yourself going, well, my verb is shoot, and there's nothing here except these rabbits, so I will use gun on rabbit and see what happens. Which actually brings me some to something I'll probably talk about maybe next episode, maybe later this episode, depending on where I cut it. Um, about the connection between this game and classic adventure games. There is, there is a visual through line in terms of visual design, I think. Anyway, time to meet the coolest guy in all of Xenozoic. I may be blind, but I know I'm aiming at her brain. You have a powerful family, Gat. They offer a handsome reward for your hint. You know, they told me I had to kill her too. Don't! Meet me back at where those monsters are, and I will leave her. Ah, parkour. So, naturally self-sacrificing Gat immediately decides to do so. You must be thinking that if you are very quiet, maybe you can hide from me. But you can't hide from my squirrel. And the squirrels, they make such a distinct high-pitched sound. I can shoot them from a thousand bodies away. This guy thinks he's the coolest guy in the world, but he, his combat style is reliant on exploding squirrels. It's not like... You can tell that his mental image of himself is just way radder than he thinks he is. Especially with the, like, awkward parkour bouncing. don't hunt people, but hunt someone who killed for their mother, his own father and mother, I will enjoy this. I don't know how much I can talk during this fight because he says a lot of things. It's one of my own, much better than the dress you carry with you. Come on, I mean, that's kind of rude, but... So yeah, uh, his fighting style involves throwing squirrels at you. The squirrels chase you, and when they get close, he shoots them and they explode. Also, occasionally he just shoots you directly. I like that there is a self-awareness to his... Ouch. Yeah, okay, so... That was probably three or four that hit me at once. That's not normally ideal. Uh, you can shoot yourself to get rid of them, but that's not ideal. It's one of the most awkward and strange boss fights in this game, or indeed in any other game I've played. It is very... it's kind of inconvenient, to be honest. It's also entirely possible that the pathfinding of the rabbits will just not work very well, and... You can just uh, run back and forth spamming at him, and he just he gets destroyed. So yeah, 
Um, it's a very fun boss fight because it can be difficult to dodge, and if it isn't difficult to dodge, you just fire over and over. Amazing sound effect. I saw him. Who was that? Someone my family sent. A hunter. They sent a hunter after you? How did all this start? When did your brothers and sisters start treating you as their enemy? You'll tell me all about it while we... After Metamoc killed himself, I decided to go back to Halstom. But I didn't go back to the family's plaza. Instead, I went to see the Northern Gate Gang. Our family traded with the gang, but I wanted to know firsthand why father and mother spent so much time with them. Stop! If you wish to enter the Northern Gate Guard, you must first do me of the small slender stocks with tiny yellow flower heads, because I am just a door and cannot learn about such things on my own. Only friends can enter the Northern Gate Bar. You need the password. Parts of the Northern Gate Bar entrance remind me more than anything of uh, the kind of fiberglass and concrete constructions you get in theme parks that are sort of garishly painted to look like stuff. It's not an aesthetic you see very many other places, in all honesty. Aren't you one of Father Mother's men? You should know you're not allowed to enter. Father Mother sent for me. I forgot the password. Of course. Let me tell you something. Some members decided to leave our Northern Gate gang. One Tef stole my best pipes too. Bring him here. And I will remind you which was the password. Go and come back with my old friends already. They should be right outside at the square. The important thing we learn here is that punches can be exchanged for goods and services. Also, there's an achievement for bothering this guy. It's not really worth the effort, you just... If you keep standing there, he gets irritated. But he only says the same thing over and over, so you don't actually get anything new out of it. So this is one of the only times we actually get to wander around Hastum and get a look at what this city is like. And, um... Hi, you look confused. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to bring up the thing I was saying about... Really, really hungry. Well, I'm just going to talk over these guys because they have nothing interesting to say. So, there's a kind of a... A classic style of fantasy illustration and children's illustration uh, with overlapping uh, design styles, let's say, of these extremely lush, hyper detailed environments which are really kind of surrealistic. And I definitely think that was an influence on the design of this game. This is one of the more freaky looking guys, I think. You only see his face for a second, but he looks highly peculiar. Bother me. Go back where you came from. Alright. Is everybody here this hospital? Hey, stranger. Need some help? You wouldn't want some thief to know you're not from around. You have a lot of stuff, eh? What are you carrying? I think you've got something better than that. Hand it over. Ooh. You're dead. You get an eye just like mine. <laughs> I like that this guy's uh, fight-starting threat involves pointing out that someone else clearly kicked the shit out of him recently. 
Like, wow, really, really scary guy. Huh? Hey, he can headbutt too. He's not the only. That other guy isn't the only one, huh? So, with a bit of luck, I'll make it through this fight in one session. Um, but these guys are a bit tougher than. Well, they might not be a bit tougher, but they. Possibly it's the environment, possibly they are tougher, I don't know, but I have a harder time fighting these guys than most of the fights in the game. Ow! Although, in all honesty, Seikung is one of the only guys I respect, like... You know, this is- you know, you know the whole this is a freak show, I don't respect literally any of you people thing? Yeah, that's this. Except for Seisung. Like, he's the only one who looks like he knows what he's doing. You, you good? Ow! Of course, you can just, like, take the weapon and use it on them, but, um... That always feels like cheating to me. I'm gonna take these, though. Eat someone's magic potatoes. You down? Yeah, you're down. So, note that they didn't get the little red cross-outs on them. Also, it's a return of these things. This is kind of a long fight. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, although the second half of it can be troublesome. But, um... Actually, I want to talk about the sound design as well, because there is, there are a lot of kind of basic stock sound effects in this game. And uh, that's completely understandable, you know, it's a small studio. Obviously they would use a pre-made library, that just makes sense. But, in addition to that, it's hilarious to me the ones they've chosen to use for a lot of... Uh, specific sound effects. For example, why... That's... The sound effect of someone getting shot with this crossbow sounds very much like a kind of a stage sound effect for when they want to imply someone getting punched, if you know what I mean. Um, it's a very... Badumptish kind of noise. So, the reason these guys didn't get the... Uh, red cross outs on them when I knocked them down the first time is because you have to fight them again because they weren't actually knocked out. I wonder if they formed some kind of a secondary gang, you know, they left the North Gate gang in order to make their own gang and therefore... I don't know where I'm going with that. Anyway. Satan is one of my favourites because he looks like he's from a different game. He looks like some kind of orcish engineer from a proper fantasy game. Instead of a weird idiosyncratic fantasy game with a whole army of people, none of whom look anything like one another. I think this is the only time we get to fight him as well. It's so nice when they just stand there and let me do that. Oof, tired. Huh. That last hit really knocked an absolute ton of his health. Why is he called a mechanic? I wonder if he does mechanical things or if that's just his name. So yeah, something about the sort of lumpy designs really strongly remind me of these children's books I remember, which themselves were based on... Oh! That's just the one I wanted. You can go in now. The password is Goldenrod. Uh, were based on an older style of children's illustration. I also love that, like... The surrealist imagery just is... It just completely goes ham for the entire game. Yeah, of course there's a weird hooker made of legs that has snakes that you smoke from. Sure, why not? Um, so that's going to be the end for today. I will be going through that door next time. So that's all from me for now. Bye! 
I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.